Yo, 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 what's good, YouTube? What's good? It's Stormy B Man, and I am back welcoming you to another Noids on Culture with Stormy B Man, Andrew Titan, for this Monday, June 6th, 2022. And this is number five in the series. We're calling it Return of the Force. And you've guessed it correctly. We're going to be talking about the Star Wars universe this evening, particularly because we are revisiting some major characters from the Star Wars universe right now on Disney+. Plus. So we could not wait to uh, jump at the chance to talk about these characters, to talk about the series and where it's going. And that series happens to be the series Obi-Wan Kenobi. And for those of you who do not know the history, the rich history of the Star Wars universe, Obi-Wan Kenobi is a tremendous figure in Star Wars lore, one of the main Jedi and leaders on the light side of the Force. So it is a pleasure that we are going to get into things this evening talk about these characters, talk about this series that's on the cusp. And uh, we're, gonna, we're just going to overall have a great time uh, this evening discussing these things. So with no further ado, allow me to introduce my partner in crime here with this show. We got Drew Titan in the building. What's going on with you, Drew? How you doing, bro? Salute, Sensei. Got my nerd hat on. Let's get it. <laughs> yes, sir, man. This is what it's all about, man. This is what it's all about. And uh, I'm excited, man. I've, I've got a chance to get down to three episodes thus far of Obi-Wan, the series. And uh, it's it's exciting, isn't it? It's like, oh, man, man, revisiting these characters. We never thought we would get to this point. Right. Where we're, we're, we're having the opportunity for those stories to be told to us in you know in detail what happened in between episodes four five six you know and so forth and so on now we're getting all of that man can you believe it <laughs> man in the 80s right when um my first introduction to star wars was star wars the first movie from 79 um then empire strikes back and then return of the jedi after that that was it when i was younger um, my older family members had to explain no though that that's four, five, and six, there's a prequel because, because you know, I'm like, oh, those are the words we was reading in the beginning of the movie? And it was groundbreaking when they remade episodes one through three. And I said, okay, you know, some of the, the first one got on my nerves, but it got a little better, right? But I remember back in the 80s where there were books of Star Wars. All of those things were side stories with side characters everyone had an individual story this is what happened during when the empire did this i was over here doing this and um it's like that this is why the star wars universe is so vast that um everything somehow even from the books to the video games is connected yes sir the cartoons everything is connected that's what makes this so unique and i remember uh, they said it was uh, that you you read about what happened with Obi Wan and uh, um, Anakin, but it was in a book. I never thought I'd see it some twenty years on a film, and the way they did it was so beautiful. And um, now we're getting to see what happened after that point when he first ran into him as Darth Vader. You know what I'm saying? And and these are all things that I've wanted to see for the last two decades, more than that, damn near three decades. And now we're finally getting to see it, man. It's beautiful. Yeah, it's 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 like um, you get it. You, it, it's like the the gift that keeps on giving. You you thought something was wrapped up, and then you find out like an onion. You peel back, and there's layers and layers and layers. Yeah. And technology yeah. has caught up to the degree that they can kind of do this easily without spending the multi-millions of dollars that it takes to make a film that they can actually bring it down into a tv series you know mini series 
so to speak, because they're I, I think most of these series go eight, no longer than 10 episodes. And uh, Obi-Wan in particular is going to be eight. So we look forward to that. And like I was telling you behind the scenes, they've already greenlit a season two that will take place two years after what's happening right now. So if you guys haven't had a chance to go ahead and get invested in this, please do so. And how about this, Drew? I, I, I didn't share this with you yet, but since we're live, we could talk about it a little bit. Ewan McGregor is not just signed on to do Obi-Wan Kenobi. He can appear in The Mandalorian or any of the other series that will take place between now and and whatever they've got coming down the pipeline that takes place either during the first trilogy, you know, mm -hmm. or before the second trilogy, you know what I'm saying? Or after, mm -hmm. excuse me, after the second trilogy. Right. So they, they've got him locked in and that's great news. You know what I'm saying? That is, that is great news to see. Right. And how about this? You and I talked about this behind the scenes but we can let it be known to the people. Mace Windu is not dead. He's coming back, people. He's coming back. <laughs> Goes to show you, <gasps> if you don't see a body, he's not dead. And we've been saying that since it happened. First of all, when it happened in the theater, everyone was like, come on. <laughs> God damn it. And I said, you know what? That pissed me off. But you know what? I said, you know He's a Jedi, man. He just got shocked and thrown out the damn window. Right? That's right. And they, they've been leading this up. They've been leading up to this for a long time. Now, I can't guarantee this, but we don't know who saved Grogu. Right. Jedi's was getting shot down and all over the place. So who's the only Jedi that could, that could have ran in there and saved that boy? Yep. I'm going to... Now, I'm not sure, but I got to believe after he fell all of that way... He landed on his feet. I have no arm. I lost my damn lightsaber. I got to go back to that temple and save who I can. And he grabbed that young, whatever species and, Yoda is. And I've already heard that they said that he's going to have a blue lightsaber, not the purple one, because he lost the purple one in purple battle. One. Where would he get a blue lightsaber if he doesn't make his own? Because, you know, the real Jedi's, they like get the his experience, they they know what to do to build their own lightsaber. He would have got one from the Jedi Temple. Yeah, yeah. They have to do a certain thing to get it to work too. Yeah, man, I'm just excited about all this. And, and, <laughs> and that was another thing. That was when Mace Windu died in the movie. I had the same feeling when I saw Boba Fett get knocked into that damn pit. I said, how do you kill Boba Fett like that? He was supposed to be a badass. And I said, they killed him like that. And then you find out 30 years later, he didn't die. If you don't see a body, they're not dead. You know what Absolutely, I mean? Absolutely, man. You brought back Boba Fett. Why not bring back Mace Windu? And Boba Fett, you know, he didn't do, he didn't have very much dialogue when he first appeared, you know, in the films. And he was definitely a character that became extremely popular. He was like what you said before in one of our other shows when we were talking about the book of Boba Fett. You said he was like a space ninja. Yes. Right? And, and so he didn't talk much or whatever. So when we saw him get his own series, and then when they fleshed out, like, it's really Boba Fett that they, you know, the clones are made out of, that DNA that's right from uh Django Fett. So it's yep. like, man, this is some amazing lore, amazing man. It's stuff, amazing. Man. But uh let, let's uh start getting into talking about this this uh amazing series that they've put together, Obi-Wan Kenobi, man. Obi-Wan Kenobi was able to escape at the end of Revenge of the Sith. He and Yoda went separate ways. And they, they spoke with Bell Organa about what they were going to do with the twins. And uh, Yoda had promised 
Obi-Wan, when he takes Luke back to Tatooine to uh, look over him there, take him back to his family, and Bail Organa said he would take Leia because he and his wife had always wanted a child, mm -hmm. so he would be watching over Leia. Now, uh, Obi-Wan was instructed and directed by Yoda that he would have special training for Obi-Wan while he was away at Tatooine, and he would teach him how to commun com commune with his original uh, uh, master, uh, Jedi, Qui-Gon Jinn. So we haven't heard or seen anything to allude to that in this series yet. Matter of fact, what we've seen is that Obi-Wan has not been practicing the ways of the Force and has kind of become extremely rusty, you know, when it comes down to that. Would you like to elaborate on that a little bit, Drew, in your own way? Yeah. <clears throat> what I noticed was he went through the human phase. He accepted the fact that they lost the war um, and the character went into a, a bit of a funk. And um, uh, for those of you that that uh, haven't seen it, there's a little bit of spoilers here. Um, he's living a normal life, a normal life. At that time, he doesn't know that Anakin is still alive. He doesn't know. Um, so he's he, all he knows is that he's on Tatooine and um, he's watching over Luke from afar. And um, Luke's uncle, as you guys all know, um, he really doesn't want Kenobi to deal with him uh, as he gets older. He really doesn't want him to deal with him. He just wants him to live a normal life. The Empire is in charge and they, they, people are just existing with how things are. Um, but Obi-Wan wants to train him. And um, they're at that, that they're knocking heads at this point. Um, but Obi-Wan is extremely rusty. He's in a bit of a depression, you know. Uh, one thing that they pointed out when the Inquisitors are walking through the town, they're saying that uh, to catch a, uh, a Jedi, they're loyal to their word. They live by a certain code. So in other words, if if a Jedi sees something wrong, it's their duty, it's their sworn oath to right that wrong. And that's how you weed out the Jedis. And um, they're, they're, they're looking for Obi-Wan specifically. Because again, he's the one that he's one of the ones that got away. If you read the books and everything, there's several Jedis that got away, but they're focusing on Obi-Wan. Okay. Um, they find one Jedi, and well, you got to watch the series. I don't want to ruin too much for you. Uh, but um, they're trying to flush out Obi-Wan. He's extremely rusty. Um, and um, Vader shows up, what is that, in the third episode? Yes. And, and basically, he starts kicking his ass. And the way I'm looking at it, I'm like, whoa. I'm like, whoa, hold on a minute. Obi-Wan should be seeing him, you know, blow for blow. He's getting force choked. He's getting thrown around a guy, dragged through a, a, a rain of fire. It was crazy. I said, what's wrong with him? He's rusty. He hasn't used it in a while. Ten years have passed. Right. You got to factor in. It's, it's, like, it's like a boxer. Everything is mental. But if you're sitting around for a decade not doing anything, you gain a little weight. And it's like you know what to do, but you, it's ten years later. But it's not only that, though. It's not only that. There's another, and this is an inferred fact about the situation with Yoda and Obi-Wan because they did escape. They don't know if, if Palpatine is still alive. Well, well they do believe that because Yoda lost his battle with Palpatine, right? Mm -hmm. So they have to kind of make themselves unavailable to the force so he can't pick up and detect where they are. That's and, why Yoda went to that planet. And also what you saw at the end of episode two on the Obi-Wan series, when he heard that Anakin survived and he started thinking about Anakin, the last shot of the show is of Anakin in the Bata tank and he's looking straight ahead 
meaning that he senses Obi Wan. He picked him up. So they made they made that connection right there at the end of episode two of the series here, and see that's the thing. And remember when he was traveling with Leia, and he thought that he saw Anakin in the distance. Yeah. And Anakin yeah. turned around and looked at him. Yep. That, that's that whole thing about the force coming alive again. You know what I'm saying? And it's like, if it's been docile, Vader had no, no knowledge of it. But remember, there is some, some uh, cadence to this. If you go back to Return of the Jedi, when Luke was out there on the ship, and Vader was sta staring out, and 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 he was like, "My son," you know. And Luke right. was like, "Father," you know. And th th they were like communicating in the Force. Yeah, you know, because Vader could sense Luke, and that's why, like, when they were gonna make that sneak attack, and Vader was there, and he could sense him. It's like. You can't sneak up on the force like that, especially yeah. when someone is extremely force sensitive and powerful like Anakin was. So it's, it's they're keeping up with the lore and the explanation of the powers and the usages of the force. And I heard they're even going to go starting with this series. They're going to show us different aspects of force powers that we haven't seen yet, which I'm kind of excited to see that. Did you, um, how many Easter eggs did you pick up on? A, a few. <laughs> I picked yeah. up on a few. Um, I, but the, you know, and, and we don't want to tell too much about right, right, you know, right, what, right, what right. was happening in, in, in the uh, series, but, what Vader did to Obi Wan, that kind of surprised me. <laughs> I was like, he kicked his ass, man. He had he, him running. But he was like getting ready to give him some uh, get back treatment. If you understand, for, what for, I mean. for those that haven't seen it, it was like, you know how in the horror movies you're running from Jason Voorhees, <laughs> and he's just walking, and you're just trying to get away. You tripping over things, and and he's <laughs> you throwing shit at him, and he just keep coming. That's what it was like. I was like, yo, come on, stop and fight back. <laughs> it's like he couldn't. It's like Vader was on a whole other level. So he's gonna have to hit the gym. <laughs> Obi Wan gonna have to hit the gym. But I wanted to um uh bring up just one. I believe it's a harmless Easter egg. It was like one of those things where you're looking like, oh shoot, what's he doing there? Um, did you peep the clone? He was sitting there with his helmet, begging for money. Yeah, yeah. I was like, "Oh snap!" That's one of that's one of the guys from the Good Batch. There's a there's an animation called the Good Batch. Yeah, he's a clone that that Order sixty six didn't register with him. Okay, so he's sitting there on the floor, but he has on his stormtrooper gear and it's white and blue, but he has a cloth over him. He said he said something about money. He put his helmet up and it was upside down. I look, I said, "Oh man, it's it's Django Fett, but the clone. It's a clone." Yeah, yeah, he yeah, yeah. Long hair and a long beard. <laughs> said, oh, look at that. Because there was a batch of clones that Order 66 didn't register. They call them the bad batch. The so bad the batch, yeah, yeah. 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 And you know what? I haven't even watched that series, but I'm, I'm aware of it, you know. Because mm -hmm. it's like, man, it, there's so much stuff with Star Wars lore. It's like, you know, and, and, and I didn't catch it all from the beginning. So it's like, I, I got to play catch up. But this is amazing, man. And how about the uh, the Grand Inquisitor? You know, the, the fact that they've introduced him in live action. How about man, that? Man, they're introducing a whole bunch of people from the animation into live action. And that's why that, that Mandalorian, when, when what's-his-name showed up in that Western scene? Yeah. I was like, get out of here. They did that? That was crazy. And that's what I'm saying. That's he trained Boba Fett. So that's yep. why Boba Fett was supposed to be like the major bounty hunter in the universe. So to see him go out like that and return to the Jedi, everyone was like, come on, what? 30 years later, see, nobody, he's not dead. 
But then I had my, my school teacher saying, no, he's not dead because I read it in the book and they, they hint that he's not dead. But I have I was a kid. I didn't have time to read all those damn books. It was dumb. right, right. <laughs> you know what I mean? In 1986, come on, man. I wasn't reading all that. It was crazy, man. But man, so many gems in that. But I'm having fun watching this. I can't wait for next week. I know this week. This week. This week. <laughs> yeah. But it, it's man. It, Bad Bane. So much. There was so much, man. So much. Um. And, but and, that, that that was um, you know, there's not that much. I know a lot, but there's a lot that I don't know. There there was there's a lot of uh, a lot of Jedi's got away. They all have side stories. Mm -hmm. They all have side stories, man. There, there was a um, I forgot the guy's name with the long black hair, and he has black paint on his face. But he was in uh, I forgot what scene he was in. He just had like a bit part. He was sitting down at a table, but he's a Jedi. Forgot his name. And there's a Wookiee Jedi that got away. But I, yeah. I, at some point, I want to see all of these guys just show up, man. But that that is, whew, I'm having fun with this. Yeah, it's amazing, man. They've done a great job. Uh, I can only imagine what they're going to. And how about them showing Vader's home now? Which is the lava planet where him and uh, Obi Wan had their their battle at, at the end of Revenge of the Sith? He's adopted that as his personal home. He's got his yeah. own like castle there with the lava flowing through it and everything. And he has a Bata tank that he gets in to slowly try to heal his body. You know, so it's like that that whole thing right there, just like it took. You know, Boba Fett a long time of that Bata tank to, to heal his wounds for being inside that right. acidic uh, sand creature thing, you know, where he fell into the pit of. Right. But, you know, Anakin was roasted, you know, in that lava. Ooh. Hey, man, did you see how they were showing his limbs being reattached? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that was like kind of heavy, bro. And then when they showed the uh the breathing respirator, when they stuck it to his chest, yeah, I was like, damn. They, they, from what I remember reading, Vader, Darth Vader uses the the Force the most because it literally keeps him alive. The Force is keeping him alive on top of that machinery, and um, all of the Darths behind him. I went on like a search. There's several of them. Darth Bane. Um, I, I don't want to get too deep into that, but yeah, in this in this con continuity, Darth Maul is still alive. Yeah, they got to please shock me. They got. Oh, to he's going back. to be back some kind of way. I do believe that him and Obi Wan might even cross paths in this series, but it's just amazing this universe and remember we haven't even seen qui-gon yet oh he's got to show up yeah and if they bring it back darth maul around this time based off of what i've seen and i've seen a lot of the anime the animation he has a brother savage oppress he has a brother um i i i, I just need to i just i just can't wait to see what they do next now they have a second. They already signed on for the second season. I, 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 I'm ready. I'm ready now. I'm ready now. This is crazy. Absolutely, man. But let's let's talk a little bit. We 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 kind of hinted at it early in the show, but let's talk about this character right here. <laughs> uh, let's do it. Let's do it. <laughs> man, I wait for the day when he bounces across the screen again and we know we now know it's official that he is coming back mm -hmm. and he may be back in not just the obi-wan series but he may be back in uh the uh mandalorian series and in and, and a, and a couple of others because he's been around all this time so I mean, come on, your thoughts, Drew. Bro, 
again, you don't see a body, that character might not be dead. Okay. First of all, he was about to kill. That's the picture right there. <laughs> That's the picture right there. First of all, he was about to kill Palpatine, man. The, the movie, the series was over. He won, man. And Anakin and his sensitive ass trying to say some broad. You know what I mean? Want to cut his arm off and then he gets thrown out the damn window. Now, I said, all right, he lost his saber. Fine, man. Anytime you turn around, every time, Scotty, salute, brother. I see you. Um, every time you turn around, somebody in, in, in Star Wars getting their, getting their a body part taken off. Right. Yeah, what's up with that too, man? Yeah, we we great. still haven't got the answer to that, but you know that kind of thing has trickled over into the Marvel universe from uh, Disney and what they're doing because you know uh, the 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 left hand being cut off. There's something about that, Drew, and I think it's a it's a private joke amongst the filmmakers <laughs> and producers, but it's like is it? And remember. Tony Stark had his trouble with his left arm. Yeah. And yeah. that's the arm that he ended up snapping everybody back and uh, snapping uh, Thanos away with his left hand on the Infinity Gauntlet. Yep. 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 So you know, I don't know. I don't know what the joke is, but damn. And, and what you call it? Ash from Evil Dead is now running around the Marvel Universe. If they joking around with his hand, that 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 joke is over thirty years old. And for those of you that watch Evil Dead, I mean, every time he pops up, they they goofing around with his hand. But um, this right here, oh and, man, I can't wait and, to see what they do with with, with Master. And you know, I, I mentioned to you earlier about this being fan art, but yeah. as I look at the detail of that, Drew, that doesn't really look like fan art on on uh, Mace, does it? It looks like. They've actually got him made up to look like that. Um, yeah, I, I believe it. I believe it. It's amazing what these people could do with Photoshop, though. I've seen some really good stuff. Um, but look, he's coming back. I'm happy about it. I want to hear what happened. I want to see. They need to go back to the moment he got thrown out the goddamn window, because I want to know what happened. Yeah, I want to know what happened. And Jedi's could fall from that height. And use the force literally to glide themselves to safety. Yeah, okay, don't you Lord. remember in Attack of the Clones when uh Django Fett tried to put put the fire on him and he fell over that off of that balcony, yeah, that far distance down, and then he just landed on his feet and he took his robe off that was catching on fire and yeah. threw it on the ground and started fighting with his lightsaber. He's like yeah. he fell like three hundred feet, man. It's Come like, on now. <laughs> Mace, Mace, Mace could damn near fly. Yeah. Come on, man. Good job, nothing. man. You know, they, they and just wasn't he supposedly the only Jedi who had equal balance of the dark side and the light side? And the light. And that's what the purple lightsaber is. That's what the, every lightsaber color has a meaning. And Mace was in touch from what I remember. And, and anyone could correct me if I'm off on this. I think he had. He was in touch with the dark side. He understood it, which is why he was able to, 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 to go one D with Palpatine and beat him. He beat him. He beat and him. And he could sense stuff in Anakin, too, even when he was a little boy. Remember? Right. Yeah. They, and, and that's what I, you know, some people used to ride uh, George Lucas about his, um, his directing skills and stuff like that. But he did things sometimes. He asked his actors to do the subtle things, which means that you had to be intelligent into what was transpiring to pick up on things. Like, remember when he was talking to Anakin, not as a little boy, but when he was like a teenage pot Padawan or whatever, mm -hmm. and he was like, uh, uh, when he was sending Obi-Wan on a mission and something like that. And, and he told Anakin that we need you to stay here, Anakin. And he was like, why? And then they show how Mace looked at him. Like, you know, he gave him just a like subtle he look. Like he knew he, he knew what was going on. He could sense the dark side and Anakin, 
you know, he was very force sensitive. And you could actually say even more than Yoda because Mace was picking up on Anakin way before Yoda was. Yeah. Yeah, he was. He knew he knew that. He knew what was going on with him. Um, Mace, Mace was up there. Mace was up there sitting next to Yoda, man. Mace was up there. He was a bad boy. Remember, Jango Fett got beheaded because of Mace during those Clone Wars. Ooh. He took his head off. He took his head right off his shoulders. I was like, oh, I didn't know they were going to do that in the movies. Did you see I was that like, one episode of the Clone Wars when they showed Mace take on the whole army, the animation? Oh, yeah. He kicked <laughs> <everyone's ass. laughs> woof, woof, woof. He's kicking everyone's ass. Mace Window was gangster with it. That's what I'm saying. That's what I'm saying. These characters, by the time we see them, <laughs> I'm like, wait a minute. He gets fried by lightning and thrown out a damn window. That's how he dies? Impossible. And then when you see all the backstory and all the, all the crazy shit he was doing in the cartoons and in the, uh, the, the animated uh, uh, CGI, you're like, how did he get fried with lightning and thrown out a window and he's dead? Impossible. I think he got hit with the lightning, thrown out the window, right? Fell and said, I could go back upstairs and kick both Anakin and Palpatine's ass or I got to get to that damn temple and get those kids safe. And I think he ran to the temple and got out as many younglings as he could because a lot of younglings got away. Some got killed. But before Darth Vader shows up, he had to save Grogu. That had that had to been that had to been Mace Window. I could be wrong. Had to been him though. I think it was him. And hey, I like this. While we're talking about this, I want to just drop a little tidbit on you, Drew. Um, that uh, you know, George Lucas is married to a woman from Chicago named Melody Hobson. You know, she's a she's a uh, a woman that's a uh, she's a businesswoman. You know, enterprising and all of that or whatever. And when they're here in Chicago, local, you know, they, they do a lot of functions here and stuff like that. But he prefers being on the West Coast in uh, California. But for a little, well over a year, he lived in the building where I work. Oh, wow. So I got a chance to meet George. Wow. Hey, he's solid, man. He's a solid dude. Yeah. And, uh. You, you, you know, it, it's funny because they asked me, his personal assistant was like, are you a fan of the movies and stuff like that? You know, and I said, like, oh, yeah, of course. Who doesn't like, you know, the films that George has put out, you know? And it was like, it's funny because you've never asked him about that. You've never. This was when he was about to move out because they they lived where I worked for well over a year while their other place just a couple blocks away was being remodeled because they were expanding. Yeah. So they were like, you you never touched on the subject, ain't never asked him nothing. I said, that's because, I said, this is his home. You know, I, I don't want to infringe upon his personal space and time. And or They said, well, you know what? That's very thoughtful of you. You you don't have any idea. Wherever he goes, where people are just like, they can't control themselves. They say, we'd like to do something for you. They said, uh, do you have anything, Star Wars, memorabilia, Raiders of the Lost Ark, anything like that that you would like him to autograph personally for you? I said, well, I got the movies on Blu-ray, you know, the box set, you know, whatever. They was like, okay, we'll, we're going to have George autograph that personally for you. I was like, no, Get you don't have here. to do that. They were like, no, we want to do this. Listen, man, solid people, man. Everybody that works for him, too. Solid people, man. Wow. Another quick story about George. Uh -huh. This is one time I had a small chat with him. His, his personal assistant had dropped him off. He was coming in, and he was like, ooh, it's chilly out there. I said, yeah. Uh, I said, what's your favorite sport? He said, football. I said, your team? He's like, the 49ers, of course. I'm like, okay, we're going to have to chop it up about football. He went upstairs for about maybe 45 minutes. Drew, when he came back down, he had this little bitty bag. He said, I'll see you in a couple of weeks. He went to the airport to go back to Cali because it was too chilly in Chicago for him. And it was only about 45 degrees. Wow. But he had this little, this little bag. And the funny thing about it is because, you know, when he flies, he flies on his personal jet you know yeah yeah he probably gave them just enough time to fuel the jet up 
Man, I ain't mad at him. Just like that. I'm like, man, it must be nice. You know what I'm saying? Man, man, you if you got up. it like that, <laughs> if I had it like that, all I would do is chase the sun. I wouldn't be in New York from, I want to say, probably October. And I wouldn't come back here until like about April. I would chase the sun because it gets cold and I'm just I'm just sick of it. I love New York, but I'm ready to love it from a distance. <laughs> I have to say, he's probably one of, if not the most wealthy person I've met in my life. But he's about as genuine as the, you know, the most common of people, man. And those plaid shirts and blue jeans and tennis shoes, that's yeah. his thing. That's what he really, his wife had him get dressed for an event. He hated being dressed up, man. He was like, in a tux. he was like, man, I can't wait to take this damn thing off. It was like <laughs> that dude loved them plaid shirts and jeans, man. I'm gonna tell you, <laughs> like, man. But he seemed like a down to earth guy, man. You know, if I had to ask him one question, you know what I would ask him, but I wouldn't do it in front of an audience. I say, hey, man, look, there's something I noticed from when I was a kid. Why is it that everybody in the empire, the way they dressed, the way they treated one another, they gave me a very like a Nazi feel. Did you do that on purpose? I think he did. Yeah. I think he did. A lot of the archetypes in Star Wars are circled around. Like you could actually say like the clone army and all that. Those are the Nazis. Mm hmm. You know, and uh, Palpatine, you know who he's representing, yeah, yeah, yeah. But, but not just from that standpoint, but when you talk about the Jedi, you know, you can almost say that that's a symbol symbolism for the Jews, you know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? It's like in the, in the way they view themselves, because remember, it's like how the world views them, you know. And things of that nature. There's a lot of archetypes that it's like it's in that lore. And 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 the funny thing about it is there have been discussions. People have picked those things apart and had arguments and debates and all of that. But um, a lot of what has transpired throughout our history and our lives and everything, people don't pay attention enough. That's why it's important to read. Yes. That's why it's important to read because an unread person is in a dangerous place. You ain't lying, man. You are not yep. lying about that, man. Yep. So, but hey, uh, I got something I wanted to share. Uh, we're we're uh, forty minutes into the show. God I got damn, already. Yeah, I know, right? It goes hey. by, man. I tell you about that. It goes by. <laughs> But I got something I want to share just for people who have not yet seen Obi-Wan. I got something I want to share here. This is the trailer for the series. He must be trained, like you trained his father. You still hmm. want to know me. He's gone. Maybe you've been looking in the wrong places. I want every lowlight and bounty hunter to squeeze him. Man, that's some awesome stuff there, bro. 
like I said, we're we're three episodes in with a new episode dropping this week. I'm excited. <laughs> I can't wait to see what's next, man. Yeah, they've done a great job with these series. I mean, The Mandalorian alone has been its own thing. You know, it's like, and with each subsequent season of The Mandalorian, they have just like expanded, expanded. You know, it's been amazing. Man, I, 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 you know, when you watch some of this stuff, it takes you back. You know absolutely it, it takes you back you're like wow man i remember what i was doing i was wondering about this character about that character what happened in between that and like i said um i didn't have time to read those books when i was growing up so now they're taking those stories and they actually bringing some of it elements of it to the screen man and and i appreciate that man this is just like it's bonkers man i, I i'm having fun with it i can't wait i can't wait to see it i can't wait to see more man I can't wait to see more. Yeah, we may have to come back after the series wraps and, oh, and yeah, talk definitely. about, you know, the, the finale and whatever transpires. Because I know since they've already greenlit a uh, second season, there's probably going to be some type of cliffhanger. You know that. Oh, of course. Of course. And you know what? That's when they start plugging uh, 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 other series. Who knows? They might. They 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 might. They might plug. They might plug another Mandalorian season. They might plug. Uh, I don't know. I don't, who knows? You you always find. You always find something else. Like like when the series is over, they might plug the the Ashoka series. Yeah, they might do that, and that's going to be something. That's going to be something else, man. I mean, so many options, man. It, it keeps me. It keeps me like involved. Yeah. You know, I yeah. finally I never understood people's fascination with soap operas until like I started dealing with like long-term series like Star Wars. Yeah. Now I understand the thought process behind it. Because you know, I'm like, whoa, you can do this, you can go here, you can go this direction, that direction, this direction. So it's like an it's like a spider web of things you can do, so many options, man. And I'm, I'm I'm excited for that, man. That's gonna be crazy, man. The Ahsoka series is gonna be nuts because I don't know if you saw, but she actually fights Vader in the animated series, and I think that's when I think she gave up one of her blade. Wait, see, I'm trying to, the continuity. I'm trying to remember in, in which which direction they went because I think. Either she gave up a blade or, or just stopped using them all together. I forget. But they fought. They fought again. And he hates to be called Anakin, too. Yeah, he can't stand that. He hates that. Anakin is dead. Anakin is dead. Anakin is dead. Man, listen. They, I saw some fan art. Forgot where I saw it. But it was just an, it was a concept. It was an idea. And somebody said this is what Anakin would look like if um he um it said uh uh, uh Anakin uh light Anakin Anakin light or redemption Anakin like what if Darth Vader didn't blow up and what if uh Luke got him off the Death Star before it blew up and saved him and he went back to the light and um it was good concept art but i was reading the comments they said yo come on don't start playing with the time and continuity because we can't take it there's too much going on don't do that um it was just good it was good concept art but i was reading the comments i was like please don't do this <laughs> don't do this don't start dragging in alternate dimensions because you're going to confuse everybody if, if you're new to it it's already easy to get confused but um it was just fan art, man. I, I like it, man. But I'm excited about the big news for me is Mace Windu coming back. That's that's the news for me. That's the news for me because I was never, ever, 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 ever good with him getting shocked and thrown out a damn window. I said, that can't kill him. Hell no. And we also could look forward to the return of Yoda in this uh, series. Uh, even before the finale, he, he Yoda should appear because 
he's got to uh, commune with uh, Obi Wan, and uh, Qui Gon's got to show up too. So, what if can we get another Yoda fight? Cause Yoda's badass, man. Yeah. Yo, yo, listen. What was your reaction when you was in the theater? Cause I know you saw it in the movies. And Duke who just beat up Anakin and knocked out Obi-Wan. And then Yoda comes walking in with the goddamn cane. With what was your little, reaction? With, with that little you? grunt that he does. Yeah. Mm, mm. Mm. And I remember watching that in the theater. And I said, oh, shit. Oh, we about to see. Because, because yeah, I remember in the movies, in Empire Strikes Back, you learn about Yoda, but you don't see him at first. You learn about him, and you're like, "This Yoda was this, he was like the greatest Jedi, and he was some grandmaster. And then you find out this is this little green dude. You're like, what? So it was like, no, Yoda was that guy. And you're like, how? So now, decades later, he comes limping in to fight Dooku, and you're like, hold on. Man, listen. I don't know who hasn't seen that in the chat. If you haven't, it's on YouTube. When he pulled over his thing, he says, that's the only way we're going to solve this is by lightsaber. And he pulled his robe to the side and he held his hand out and it flew into his hand. And it was a little lightsaber. Look here, Drew. Let me tell you, you asked me what was my reaction Go ahead, Go ahead, Go ahead. I knew they were going to have to face off. But I had two reactions on two different things one was what you just talked about when he pulled his robe back and held his hand out like that and the lightsaber flew into his hand and he ignited it yeah. dude the whole theater where i was lost it they were like oh hell no <laughs> but then when he started flipping around and everything. Oh, my dude, God. The whole theater just lost it. You couldn't hear nothing. You couldn't say nothing. It was like Yoda was all over the place, bro. And we ain't never seen him move like that, right? It was like just a simple old, you know, Yoda moving around. But, man, he started jumping on top of stuff, and he was spinning and rotating with man. the lightsaber, and Dooku was trying to kill him. He got scared. He said, oh, fuck this. I'm out. <laughs> that was the hottest. Yo, where I was, people were sitting there like, they thought they were just, they were, because they was facing off with the force, they just thought Yoda was going to throw some rocks and chase right. him away. And then we said, yo, the only way to solve this is with the lightsaber. And he did all this. Yoda pulled his robe back, went like this, the shit flew in his hand. I was like, hold on. And he was and like, then he tells him, Drew, much to learn. You still much have to learn you have. <laughs> He's <laughs> flipping and Dah! yo, people in the theater stood <laughs> up. I was like, oh shit. Man, this dude just beat up <laughs> a young Anakin and, and Obi-Wan had them unconscious. He was gonna kill him. Yeah, he had them unconscious. Yoda came and saved their ass. Now I said that to say this. I brought that up to say this. How dope would it be if, because you know Obi-Wan's going to have the rematch with Vader. That's going to happen. But let's say he ain't got all his skills back. And Vader's kicking his ass again. And, and Yoda, Yoda comes shows in. up and saves his ass and chases Vader away. Man, ain't nobody fucking with Yoda, man. Let man. me tell you something, bro. Be scrapbook, salute. Salute to scrapbook, yeah, man. Listen, dude, when Dooku saw that he couldn't beat Yoda, because Yoda referred to him, my old Patty Wan, because he, he learned from Yoda, right? Dooku got the hell out of Dodge, bro. <laughs> he had the saber up. He was like, he, tripped, he went to drop some shit on Anakin. He had to get out of there. He wasn't beating him. Hell no. <laughs> He got the hell out of Dodge, man. He was like, I ain't sticking around for this. You know? Man. <laughs> oh, man. I lost it. it. And then I was Yoda, when heavy. the battle was over, he went back 
to limping around, and then he used the force to pick his cane pick back his up. Cane up. Oh <laughs> man, that was hilarious. I lost it, man. I lost it in the theater. That was one of the most great move moments in uh cinematic history to see Yoda. Because everybody, we all we remember the introduction to Yoda was in Empire Strikes Back and everything, hopping around on uh, uh, Luke's back and stuff while he was training and basically just sitting around and stuff talking crap, right? But when we saw him go into battle, that Bro. was one of the most amazing things, boy. And they And they didn't... They didn't gloss over that moment. They made that moment a highlight moment, you know, yeah. just like in the Avengers films when certain things would happen in those films, you know. They they did it the right way, man. And I don't think I don't think Star Wars fans were ever the same after seeing Yoda, man. No, no. Fight. And, and, and you know let me I mean? tell you something. What year did the uh what year did Empire Strikes Back come out? 83, 84? Something like that, yeah. And that was when we was introduced to Yoda, right? And he, we, we we heard he was some sort of super Jedi, and and then we find out in the movie that it's this little green man who's like two thousand years old or something like that. You're like this guy, and yeah. then we've been waiting damn near thirty years to see what kind of warrior he was, and. With just the right, you know, with CGI and everything, 1980, wow. With just the right amount of, of CGI, they got it dead on. And I've never been more impressed. And you know what, Stormy? I got an idea for another show. We should name the top 10 epic movie moments from any genre. Woo! <laughs> That's 10. a great show right there. Man, that'll be great. That's Top great. 10 epic moments that made you like go, what the f when you're in the theater? I could think of a few, but but we'll talk. We'll yeah, talk about that. Yeah, That'll we'll put dope. together something, man. We got to. Now that, that you Yoda moment's that, up there. That Yoda moment is up there. Yeah. The Yoda <laughs> moment is up there. Man. The oh, man, the Vader and, and and Luke moment is up there. Luke, that's the epic. revelation. <laughs> I am your father. That's where it all started. Because <laughs> that was that was the ultimate what the fuck. That that started it all. That was the ultimate what the hell what. And he's no. He rather threw, he threw his whole ass off. He he said I would rather die. <laughs> he fell off the damn thing. I said, but hey, that look, nothing. that's another instance of a Jedi falling from tremendous heights, right? Yeah, this is living. There's no way he falls all that way and lands into a little hole. I said, like, he did that, man. Come on. Mace Windows alive. I don't want to hit. He was like, no. <laughs> he said, join me. Not. <laughs> Jump right off that damn thing. Oh, man. That was hilarious, man. Oh, man. That's funny. I'll tell you another one that's not even Star Wars lore, but uh, Raiders of the Lost Ark. When he was out there and and that that arabian dude pulled out that sword and was like <laughs> and then he like, the Jones was like <laughs> <laughs> yo listen i saw that in the movies <laughs> my parents took me to see that dude jumped out yeah 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 he looked at him he pulled out the 12 gauge and blast <laughs> boom yo the theater lost it they're like, oh shit, yo, that's how it's done. That's how it's done. <laughs> yo, dude in the theater, I'll never forget this. Dude in the theater was like, yo, Jones from New York. <laughs> <laughs> I think Jones from New York. He blasts him. He ain't got time to play it. Blasted him, man. Oh man, that's funny. Amazing oh, man. stuff, man. Amazing stuff, man. But man, uh, we 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 just about come to the end of the show, bro. That's an hour already, man. Damn, that is That's crazy. Fast. That's fast, man. You want to go ahead and give some final thoughts? Um, yeah, man. Uh, we have fun doing this, man. This this is a great show, man. 
I, I'm a big nerd. I love comic books, um, old stuff, new stuff. Um, um, there's there's also independent comic book stuff that um, I'm just now finding. Um, if you get if you get a chance, Stormy, if you haven't watched it, um, I'm, I'm sure you can find all the information you need on YouTube. Uh, the the series I told you about it before, Invincible. Yeah, comic book, and they got the animation on um on a uh, Prime. It's hardcore. Okay. Don't believe that animation when you see it because it gets funky. In the first episode, you're gonna be like, "Oh shit, what's happening here?" Yeah, it, but I, I think we, should, when you get a chance, we should cover that series. It is, it, it, it's, just, it, woof. it, you know what it is? It's what if Krypton never blew up, and all those Kryptonians went around the universe just taking shit over? Wow, that's what it is. That's what it mm. is. And it, it, it's bad. What if the, what if the Kryptonians was just a bunch of assholes? That's what it is. And it's crazy. It gets crazy, man. The comic book, the, the whole series is crazy. We should cover that. But um, I got so much to say in such a little time, man. But, man, this is a great show, man. This is what we cover. Um, <laughs> and uh, Star Wars, yo, you know, Mace Windows coming back. I'm happy about that. They brought back Boba Fett. I'm happy about that. The Mandalorian series, happy about that. The, 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 the Ahsoka series, happy about that. Obi-Wan, I'm happy about that. <laughs> oh man, I'm, I'm just happy about it all, man. I love this entertainment, man. We got to get away from boxing, um, uh, uh, every now and again. You know what I'm saying? So th th this this is why this show is important, man. Salute to everybody in the chat. Y'all know where I'll be tomorrow morning. You know, Drew Titan Bronx on deck. Shout out to the mighty LDBC. But tonight, 12 a.m. midnight. Well, tomorrow morning, painful excellence podcast in about two hours. You know, um, I'm going to be talking about the market value, the, the female market value. Uh, uh, you know, what does it look like for women as they age? It's just a conversation. You know what I'm saying? So y'all make sure y'all tune in. Much love and appreciation to all of you, man. And Stormy, thank you so much for sharing this with me. This is dope. I love it. Yeah, man. I, me too. I, I love it as well, man. This is like one of those things, like when we get a chance to geek out, on this stuff like that all you need is a little moment you know a little time to let that off you know then you'd be ready to go back into the regular battle or whatever but that's the whole idea man why i came up with something like this because i know there's a lot of people out there like myself it from what i'm looking at it says that we got like 30 31 thumbs up so that means that I think that might be the highest thumbs up for a live, you know, live, that we've yeah. done on this. So that means there's been some people out there checking us out. And again, if you guys are nerds like us, that's what you're supposed to do. Come and come and support, man. That's what we're doing it for you. We're doing it for us. Doing it for you us. Know? You're about Rashid, to say Rashid, yes. I read the comic book, The Boys, and I'm currently watching season three. Yes, we, we, we need to cover that. We need to cover that. The boys. Oh man, okay, it's great. Okay. <laughs> yeah. So thanks, yeah, man. Salute Picasso, man. Salute to everybody in the chat. Salute to everybody. Picasso, salute everybody. Bert, what up, y'all? Salute, man. So that's it, man. That's it. Yeah, and 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 you guys, you got to go and check out Obi Wan. You got to check it out. Yes. Check it. Start from if you know if you got Disney Plus or whatever. Start from you know the first two episodes got released in the first week. And then episode three this, last week, and now episode four is this week. But uh, it's a slow build to some big stuff coming. I'm telling you, and uh, it's exciting. It really is because we're we're getting to find out what happened before Obi Wan ran across Luke and Leia in episode four, between Revenge of the Sith and episode four. This is telling what what happened with uh obi-wan's particular story and check them all out check out boba fett the book of boba fett we talked about that one already and uh the mandalorian seasons one two and three it's like phew, that's some great stuff man mm -hmm. and i'll tell you something that reveal at the end of season two man you know where nobody saw that coming mm -hmm. and people were questioning, is this, 
is is this what what oh hell no <laughs> <It was> like, <laughs> that was one of those moments you know what i mean so it's mm-hmm. like hey man we live for this stuff we live for it literally so yes sir but hey man thank you again drew for taking the time out with me uh for this evening and everything man great show i can't wait yeah. to do another one you know so uh but we're gonna get on out of here let everybody out for their week make sure you guys ch- uh check out the painful excellence later uh later tonight check that out and uh we will catch you guys on the next one man catch you on the next one <laughs> all peace. right peace <laughs>